Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by the XL Boat Company. Thank you, Zach, and welcome everyone to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home in West Tennessee. I am your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Zach, before I introduce today's guest, what is something you have discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? So I was on the third level in the deceptions of perception area we have um, near the water table. I've never experienced any of that before until this week. And I don't, I don't even know what to call it, but there's a, there's this little ball. An optical illusion. Is it, it's some kind of mirror thing, but you, you're far away, then you get really close and you can see every bit of your face. So it was, I've never done that before until this week. Yeah, it was a long time when that I was here before I actually um, encountered all that because it's easy to miss. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a lot of things like that that are tucked away in, in nooks and crannies and easy to miss. So uh, thank you for that. So I'm here with Berkeley Bryant, the reigning Miss Volunteer America 2025. It's now in its third year. It was streamed live and there was a big crowd there just a few weeks ago. Uh, what was it like when they put that crown on your head? Oh, my gosh. I feel like that moment was so surreal. There's so much hard work and emotion and dedication that goes into that moment. And so I think when it happened, I blanked because I didn't know. I didn't know it really happened. But I was standing there with Miss Pennsylvania volunteer, Alyssa Gallagher. She was my first runner up. And I can just remember thinking either either of us in that moment um, would enjoy the year as Miss Volunteer America and had worked hard to be there. And so it was a fulfilling moment regardless. So back us up a little bit. Tell us uh, where you're from while I text Jerome and tell him it's hot in my office. So we can... We can <laughs> Gotta um, address that, right? Not right I'm going to tell him you're in here and that you want the air turned turned down It'll be my fault, bit. of course. <laughs> I uh, love yeah. it. I love it. No, tell us about where you came from. Thank sure. You. So I am from a small town in South Carolina called Anderson, and I am actually a military brat, if you will. So I grew up in a military family. So I was born in San Antonio, Texas, moved to Colorado Springs, Colorado, Montgomery, Alabama. So I've lived a little bit of everywhere across the country, which makes being Miss Volunteer America so special because I do get to travel the country now throughout my year. And my roots are in South Carolina. I'm a graduate of Clemson University. All of my extended family are, are Clemson Tigers and got to fulfill a dream by by attending Clemson. And thanks to Miss Volunteer America, won a $50,000 scholarship oh, that's for great. college, which was huge. And yes, that's for, very helpful. for me, since I have graduated, it goes towards my student loans. And now I can officially say I am debt free oh. because of a pageant. That's amazing. Right. That's amazing. So did your uh, parents get you started in pageants early on? Actually, no. So I started competing when I was 13 years old and I was sharing this earlier, but it's so funny how my story aligned in pageantry because I grew up in the dance world. So I grew up a competitive dancer and started dancing when I was three years old as, as soon as I could and stayed in the studio for many years growing up. And then it was actually a dance teacher that encouraged me to do a pageant. And that dance teacher said, Berkeley, there's this there's this pageant with a talent portion. And I think you would really enjoy it, really like it. And you can also earn scholarship money for college. And and for me, that was pivotal at the time because she knew that I wanted to attend a big school for college and, and dance. And so uh, for me, I didn't think that going to a place like Clemson was going to be an option for me financially um, because growing up in a military family, I was going to be out of state more than likely. And so at that time, I didn't realize how many opportunities competing in one pageant would open. And so fast forward 10 years later, 10 years, which is crazy. I won Miss Volunteer America age 23. Did you win your very first one? Uh, okay. Funny question. This is a little, yes, the answer is yes, but there was only four people in it. Okay. <laughs> so it, I don't know hey, if that that's, counts, that's but good. I, I guess, I guess we'll go with it. But At least you weren't fifth place. That's, so, yeah, that's true. I could have been last. That would have been embarrassing. Mm -hmm. That would have been embarrassing, mm -hmm. but, um, but don't get me wrong. There were so many more losses before the win. Um, and I tell girls that all the time that you really have to get through the challenges and you get through the losses to get to the most beneficial part of your life, which 
for me, a lot of times I learned more in the losses than I did from the wins. And it took every single one of those for me to become Miss Volunteer America. Now, Claire, who's in the room with us, she also did pageants. How many pageants did you do? Did you did you lose any or did you win them all? You lost a few? We need um, pageant collector's cards so we can see, you know, like. Who, hey, that's a good yeah, idea. Yeah. My brother played baseball, so he would. Oh, there you go. They really appreciate that. I'm Excellent. Sure. <laughs> How many siblings do you have? I have an older brother. Uh, so he is six years older than me. And I mentioned the military background, but he is also in the military. So right. he is in the Navy as a dentist. So he went to oh. dental school huh. with the Navy scholarship. And so. He is married to um, my sister-in-law, and they have two little ones. Uh, so I have two nephews, two under two, if you can believe that. Oh, that's so, nice. And, is, and is, is that it, just the two of you? It is just the two and of And are your parents still in South Carolina? They are. They are. So they're they're my rock, and I don't know where I would be without them. Uh, they've really supported this crazy dream of mine for a decade now, which is crazy. My mom, story about her, she did compete in pageants back in the day, uh, competed in Miss Texas back in the day, and so nice. that's a huge pageant state. And so I actually think it's funny that you asked me about, oh, did someone influence you to do pageants, or, or where did you start, that kind of thing, and she never once – forced me. It, it came really naturally, like I talked about with that dance teacher. And now it's just a huge part of her story and mine. And so what was your major? I was a marketing major. So I'd graduated with a bachelor of science degree in marketing right. and a minor in biological sciences. So that's an interesting combination. Funny story there. I wanted to go to pharmacy school for the longest time because um, in my family, some some medical things happened in high school and college. So both of my grandmothers were diagnosed with dementia. And so uh, watching my mom be caregivers for both of them and then fast forward through the pandemic, that was really hard. And so I really wanted to advocate for dementia patients that couldn't advocate for themselves in the in the pharma world so I thought that would be really neat um, and then also my mom uh, was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer okay. about two years ago and so there's a lot of reasons why pharmacy is really important to me um, however I I majored in biology thinking that I would be a pharmacist but uh, now we're kind of going the sales route for me. So I found that my skills are are doing this right here, right? The communication, the marketing, that piece of it. And so I think I still want to be in the health realm in some way, but I think it'll be more on the marketing and communication side. Yeah, that's great. Claire can give you some tips about marketing and PR. I love that. We were talking about it earlier. I said, so what is your exact position? And she said, director of marketing. And I told her I pegged it. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, what, how, how you talked about your mom, yes. are you familiar with how have pageants changed through the years? I know that there's been an evolution and they've been changing and, of you know, course. how's it different today than it was years yes. and years ago? So I, I've always said, since I started competing in Miss Volunteer America, the reason I I started competing was because the person who Miss Volunteer America is, is exactly who I remember growing up looking up to. That's that's the person I remember. It's, it's this woman who uh, really does have a heart for service, who has inspired a lot of people along the way and has big ambitions, big dreams to make an impact. And, and that's who she is. And so for me, I grew up watching Miss America on TV. And that's who my mom competed underneath when she competed back in Texas. And so the Miss America organization was something that I admired uh, growing up because of my mom. But now here we are so many years later through the evolution. And, and like I said, Miss Volunteer America is the epitome of what every young woman is looking up to these days. Like I said, with the volunteer piece of the, the name, it really is the namesake of our program. It really is the heart of this organization. And I actually get to be the national brand ambassador of the Salvation Army, as well as a national brand ambassador of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which Two both roles are just really honorable in my opinion and something that every young woman, like I said, would love to be a part of one day. And so I hope to be that inspiration for for the little ones out there that need to be reminded that they're more than enough and they're more than capable of being here. 
And it's nice that Tennessee is the volunteer state. So right. It, it, it kind of just it works ties out. very well. Um, and then we talked a little bit about your platform. Share with us a little sure. bit about what, what is important to you that you also represent during this yes, reign. Yes, absolutely. So in addition to our two national partners of St. Jude and Salvation Army, we also have a personal serve initiative. So uh, for me, going into Miss Volunteer America, something I advocated for as my South Carolina volunteer was set the pace for inclusion, which is all about creating this cold culture among classrooms, among communities that really is accepting and appreciating our differences and our diversity. And that in addition to a partnership with the D.A.R.E. program is really what my my service initiative is all about. So the partnership with the D.A.R.E. program, if you're familiar listening, the D.A.R.E. program is the Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program. And it really does so much more than just talk about the effects of drugs and alcohol. It talks about how to be a good citizen, how to make good decisions, how to uh, encourage young people to combat peer pressure, combat bullying. And so that's where my partnership came into play. And already as Miss Volunteer America, I've traveled over 7,000 miles when we're listening to this right now. And it's only been two months, which is crazy to think about. And in those 7,000 miles, I've been advocating for D.A.R.E. and meeting with D.A.R.E. officers, becoming a part of these classrooms nationwide. And it was something that I was passionate about on the state level, and now I'm doing it on the national level. And then let's talk about um, why you're here in, yes. you know, Bayan County. Of course, you're here to speak and you're here to talk and pass the message along, but there's a good friend of ours, yes. uh, Paige. Um, Paige. Tell us about her and her. For, for a lot of people listening have never been in Paige. Dennis's store. Yes. Um, talk a little bit about what it's like when you go in there and what you do and why you come in here of oh all places. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, it was a treat to drive in yesterday when I drove down State Line Drive, I believe it's called. And so that was really neat to walk into Joanne's and see the amazing new store that she has opened. I think it was back in December that they've opened that new store. So mm-hmm. Everyone should take a visit, whether you're looking for prom dresses, appearance dresses, special occasion, whatever it is. I can say for me, she she dresses me constantly as Miss Volunteer America and even handed off some dresses for me for photo shoots and a really exciting movie premiere that I'll be attending on a red carpet. Just once in a lifetime opportunities that Paige herself gets to be a part of with me. And she's so generous in supporting Miss Volunteer America, as well as Miss Tennessee, Miss Vol- Miss Kentucky volunteer, Miss Tennessee volunteer, uh, and really has built those relationships that have lasted a really long time. And I know we'll continue to do so. Yeah. Paige is doing a tremendous job representing yes. our region, but also bringing people in for a really unique um, business. Do they do wedding dresses there? I believe so. Yes. I've got two unmarried daughters. And so that, you know, I want to keep the money in town. So I'll keep that relationship going. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Well, and I'll just, I'll send my wife and my, my girls there. (laughs) Let that be the girls trip, right? Yeah. I'll let them pick that out. But then right across the street is the Meadows. Yes. Which is where I stayed last night. Did you stay there last night? We stayed there when we were uh, considering moving here. I mean, it's one of the reasons we moved here. It is. Is it the hotel? Is it It not the nicest? Oh my goodness! And the restaurant is also phenomenal downstairs. Not sure if you got to eat there. I absolutely did, and have had had many meals there since then. It's it's a wonderful, wonderful place. Yes, it's phenomenal, and the hospitality was precious. And I was greeted downstairs with the biggest smile this morning. So uh, super thankful for the Meadows for for hosting me while I've been here. Yeah, and Jeff is a big. Uh, supporter yes. and uh, couldn't uh, think of a better uh, pair to yes. be down there working together and all the stuff going on in South Fulton and Fulton is really great for this area. We're going to take a quick break and when we get back I'm going to ask you the things that you do to get ready for a pageant. Let's do it. The XL Boat Company is located in Mountain View, Arkansas and here in Union City, Tennessee. They are an attractive, affordable, and tough line of boats that are the perfect choice for your outdoor adventures of all kinds. When choosing your next boat, visit xlboats.com. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Our guest today is Berkeley Bryant, Miss Volunteer America. So tell us when you decide to get into the pageant business and you just and you start to win, how does one prepare for 
um, for, for the pageant. And then also, so that's the first question. I'm sure. going to give you the second question okay. too. The second question is what was your question when they ask you and you stand there and they say, I have a question for you. And they ask you the, I love you it. know, the question, you know, let us know how you prepare and then what the question was. I love it. So I'm loving that you're asking me about the preparation because I think a lot of people out there have this misconception about pageants that you just show up in a pretty dress and it's all good. But in reality, there is so much hard work, blood, sweat, tears, all the things that goes into, goes into this dream that so many young women have. But for me, Preparing for Miss Volunteer America started when I won Miss South Carolina Volunteer back in August of 2023. So I had about 10 months, nine and a half, 10 months to prepare for Miss Volunteer America, which is a very long time in in the pageant world. And so for me, I was able to really not only invest in my community and my state, as a South Carolina volunteer from a service perspective, but I also got to really prepare what I like to call the package uh, for Miss Volunteer America. Who is Berkeley? You know, what not not who is pageant Berkeley, but who, but who is Berkeley and and what what do those five judges need to know about her that makes her qualified for Miss Volunteer America? So honestly, my preparation process looked so different than any other pageant prep because. Instead of going to interview coaches and doing all these lessons, I really just invested time in myself, which sounds crazy, but I did a lot of soul searching. I had to figure out, okay, I'm 23 years old. Why do I want to be here? And for me, that why came from why Miss Volunteer America? Not only why am I the person for the job, but but why this organization? Why do we want to grow this thing? And so I was ready and willing to, if the crown was placed on my head, to to walk away and grow the program. And so use, using the marketing background that I have, I was able to do it. So um, speaking of of questions and the why and that kind of thing, I'll share with you uh, the the question that I got asked in yes. the top five. Hold on. Let me see if I can answer it. Okay. okay. All right. You ready? Okay. You ready? Go ahead. Yeah. Give me the question. Okay. Wait. Well, I got to think about exactly how the wording was okay um okay so they asked me with young women feeling insecure in this day and age how will you inspire women to chase their dreams it was wow. something like that That's I, a great I, need question. To, I need to go back and listen to the exact wording so don't quote me but that, you got that, it that is a great question i so if it were me and okay, I was in a pageant. Answer. We're going to pretend like men can be in, okay, in well, pageants. Let's, you were yeah. me. let's just say yeah. you were me. Um, I would have to say that like the founder of Discovery Park of America, Robert and Jenny Kirkland, who founded Discovery Park, their whole mission was to inspire children and adults to see beyond, which meant to inspire, to, to be, to dream of other things, to learn about other things. And so I would build a discovery park of America so that they could, uh, experience, um, what we have here at discovery park. Wow. I would give that a 10 out of 10. Oh, thank oh my you. gosh. I mean, just right off the cuff there. Thank you. Now, what about you? How, how did you answer? So when, my first question though is, yes. were you relieved? Like when you heard the question, when did, I you, heard that just, did you hear other people's questions? First I of did. all, so I was, I think number four out of oh. the top five. So I had already heard three girls answer their questions and all of them were not, they weren't the same question, right. but they were all in the same realm okay. of difficulty, if you will. Gotcha. Like no one had a super political question or anything gotcha. like that. It was really more centered on what we would do as a volunteer. They didn't ask you who you're going to vote for. They did not. Yeah, surprisingly, yeah. surprisingly. So how did you answer the question? So when they asked me that question, I said, in order to inspire young women to believe in themselves, we have to ensure that the right role models and mentors are in their life to do that. And for me, oh, that one of the reason, one of the reasons I got involved in Miss Volunteer America was because I, I made this, this statement on social media that I think really resonated with a lot of people. And the statement I shared was, here's to being a trailblazer for the little girls out there that may need to be reminded that they're more than enough. I'll never yeah. forget. I'll never forget that. And yeah. it was something that in the moment I, it became, I didn't know it would become a quote, <laughs> if that makes sense, yeah. but it really did. It get, it got shared by, by so many state organizations within Miss Volunteer America, because yeah. that really is the center of why we do what we do is to ensure that the next generation 
has something to look forward to and has those role models in their life to believe in themselves and believe in their dreams. Yeah. Um, and that's so important nowadays with social media Yeah, and with, you know, how much social media can tear young men and women and down. Can. And I you think know. it's part of the question too. I can't exactly remember, but basically with social media being so prevalent and girls suffering from the insecurity and the comparison that comes from it, how will you combat that? And so you're right. It's, there's so much comparison out there. And so in Ensuring that they have that strong foundation that they know that with hard work and dedication, you can achieve your dreams regardless of what other people are doing around you. Yeah. That's the kind of inspiration that they need. So you don't, do you have to like not work, like work another job like this year, like you're traveling? I mean, I know it's work, but you can't can't look for another job. Exactly. Well, so it's completely up to the title holder. And so they sat me down really shortly after I won Miss Volunteer America and we kind of lined out my year and it was very evident in their eyes that I wanted to take this thing full force. And so I think because of that, they've really taken it to the next level when it comes to booking me for appearances far and wide. Um, I'm actually going to Hawaii in December to the Miss Hawaii Volunteer Pageant. I'm going to Wyoming in two weeks. I'm uh, going to South Dakota. I think we're really trying to increase the presence of Mm -hmm. who Miss Volunteer America is. I'm going to New York to serve in a soup kitchen for the Salvation Army um, around the 9-11 time frame. I'm going to D.C. So honestly, I'm trying to imagine having a a job outside of Miss Volunteer America or even being in school uh, you shouldn't this. do it because what an opportunity, you know, you that 365. You, this will this. change the whole rest of your life. It already has. Yeah. It's changed the trajectory of of who I am and, and who I will be. Um, the, the relationships I've built, the people I've met, the opportunities I've had. You, you can't replace that. And so I, w- I couldn't imagine doing it any other way. I really do take every single day uh, to heart and, and treat it with everything that I have because I'm just so grateful. And this is your, this is, are you the fourth or the third? I am the third. You're the third. Do y'all have like a chat group that you text each other that you, so that they, they both support you? Contact me. Technically, um, Miss Tennessee volunteer was the first Christine Williamson. She was, um, the first title holder in the organization, but I'm the third to be crowned with the Miss Volunteer America pageant. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, for me, Alexa and Hannah, who are the other two prior to me, joining their legacy has been an honor because they really are uh, investing in in the success of it because they worked for 365 days during their years and they want to ensure that the next girl takes it just as seriously or um, if there's lessons that they learned that they would do differently, they yeah. share those with me too because – Again, we all want to make the most of this. That's good. So yeah. they've been very, uh, very crucial it's in good my that Y'all can mentor all of them yes. coming up for the next years. Speaking of that, I've one of the things that I've kind of started doing this year is talking to each of the state title holders that are winning. So as of now, I think we have 10 to 12 girls that will be competing for my job next year. And so one of the things I started doing, and I'm sure my directors might have thought I was crazy, but I asked for their phone numbers and I wanted their phone number so that I could personally call them, congratulate them, welcome them, and then kind of just start that relationship. Cause I want them to be able to ask me questions sure. or if they have ideas, give those to me. Or if they're, they just want to chat or if they're worried or nervous, I want them to reach out and that's what this is all about is lifting each other up. And so I'm excited to continue doing that as, as more state title holders are crowned. That's great. And as people have listened now and they want to follow, follow you along yes. your journey, where can they find Please more about do. you? Please do. So you can follow us on Miss Volunteer America Page, P-A-G, on Instagram or the Miss Volunteer America Pageant Facebook page. You can also find us on TikTok, Miss Volunteer America. And then you can find my personal pages as well. They're usually linked up to that, but I'm Berkeley B0906 on Instagram and Berkeley Bryant on Facebook. Fantastic. It was such a pleasure to to meet you and Absolutely. get to hang out. And if you need somebody to go to Hawaii and hang on to your crown for you and just, you know, just let me know. Um, I have I'll, a lot of offers for that. Yeah, I bet you have. Yeah, I bet you have. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. I can't well, wait. Thanks for coming to Discovery Park. Thank you so much for having me. I've been so impressed at Discovery Park and looking forward to all the amazing work y'all continue to do. So thank Awesome. You. Thank you. Thanks to all you listeners who have joined us today at Discovery Park of America. 
Of course, our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com.